Hello, my name is Rennie Volt Lowell, and we are about to have a quick demonstration of the Beer's Law and Colorimetry Spectrophotometry Science Lab. And really quickly, let's point out a few things here. We have some accessibility options that are going to involve some interesting transitions and audio. This is an experiment not only for the students but for ourselves in accessibility land, the Section 508 compliance. Uh, as you can see, the buttons will get bigger as you roll over them. And uh, being able to make as much use of the real estate was important. We could toggle full screen, and we were trying to get the students very immersed in the lab and be able to see everything. So there's a lot of big equipment. The spectrophotometer down below is a very big item, so that was important to be able to close this window and maximize the space available to the students on the physical virtual desktop that it sits on. So let's jump right into it. For the instructions, uh, we made it very simple. We're going to have two parts. Here we have the absorbance of standard samples. We're going to take measurements of the observed absorbance, transmittance, and concentrations of each and plot these concentrations versus absorbance and record them on a graph. This is something that we're going to have the students also turn in in the classroom. So this is a bit of a hybrid approach to doing online versus in class. And the first thing we need to do is go to the part one button, start that up, click on that, and we are presented with six different vials. Uh, really quickly, if you go back to the instructions and read, this is in part two, we're going to get the absorbance of unknown samples. So these first standard samples are gonna be the ones that are gonna drive the data for the students to be able to figure out the absorbance of the unknown samples. And in the second part, the spectrophotometer will only display readings of absorbance and transmittance. It is expected that you will determine the concentration levels of each sample based on the graph in part one. So this is an exploratory lab for the students, but it is based on some good data that they can then infer from the first part to figure out the answers to the second part. So let's dive in. Try to make it very intuitive and immersive and keep it so that students have to do the least amount of navigation to be able to get to the content and instead spend most of their time learning the actual content, not trying to find out where it is. Let's go ahead and go to the next part where we actually start the first part of the lab. So we already clicked on part one. That's where those six cuvette vials showed up. And once the samples appear on the table, you may begin taking measurements with a spectrophotometer. We're going to open the spectrophotometer lid by either clicking on the open lid, which I'm going to go ahead and do now. Can't see the mouse because I'm recording the screen, but that's what I did. I clicked on the open lid, and now it becomes closed lid, so it tells you to do the opposite when you're done. We can do that also with the mouse wheel, if you had a mouse wheel available. So we're all about options. So now let's go back to the instructions and see that we're going to do the calibration part. Now the lid is open. We're going to go ahead and grab the blank of pure H2O to calibrate the machine. So this is something that they would do in class. They would always calibrate the machine upon starting it up. They wouldn't just throw a sample in there. And you can click on it, which I'm doing here, and it says that once you click on the blank, it will follow your mouse cursor until you click anywhere else a second time, at which point it will be released. So as you can see, I'm bringing this closer and closer to ourselves and this is back in the day when we were trying to approximate 3D. Um, this is more of a, a, a 2.5D in flash and as you can see we did things like make the uh, things that you pick up become smaller as you bring them to the back and larger as you bring them to the front. Um, also the angle we chose this to tilt it to make it seem as though that's the way you're holding it. You're kind of holding it to the side and also to be able to display the shadow of this that would move with it and get just as big or just as small depending on where the point of light was hitting it from. So these days it's going to become a lot more immersive. There is 3D that is true 3D coming around the corner. Adobe has been able to put together this thing called Molehill which is now referred to as stage 3D for the average consumer and for once, we have true 3D because we are able to tap directly into the graphics processor unit instead of taxing the CPU, which is what I'm doing here. Um, so we're going to be using the GPU for many other things in the future with Flash that is going to allow wonderfully immersive learning scenarios like rotating bones, being able to look at molecules, all kinds of wonderful things that really look just like the 3D games.
So we're talking World of Warcraft style, we're talking Diablo, we're talking high-end graphics are what we're going to be able to achieve with Flash. So let's uh, jump out of that 3D talk. I know it excites me, but you want to see some action here. Now that we got this cubette, we're going to go ahead and place it in the spectrophotometer. Right there, and it's going to need me to close the lid. After I've closed it, it says when you've successfully inserted the blank, close the lid, which I did, and calibrate the spectrophotometer to 100% transmittance by clicking on the button labeled zero absorbance 100% transmittance found on the left side of the machine. So that would be this one right here. And these buttons look exactly like the ones in the on the physical device in the physical lab. So I'm going to click that. As you can see up above in the LED screen, we have setting blank. This is the same behavior of the spectrophotometer in the classroom. And then it goes to the readout, which is 400 nanometers at that wavelength, 100% transmittance through the pure H2O cuvette is achieved. So we've calibrated that. Now we're going to go ahead and open the lid and click back on that cuvette to take it out and put it back. And now we're off to the next set of instructions. I'm going to scroll to those. Take measurements. So now we've got the part where once we have the spectrophotometer that's been calibrated, we're going to go ahead and take the measurements of the samples. So we're going to grab this first one here, Q5000, and we are going to drop that in the same receptacle that we did earlier with the water. So now that it's in there, we're going to close the lid. And now we're going to go ahead and click on the AT. C button to get the absorbance, transmittance, and concentrations, uh, those readings, each of these respectively. That would be this button down here. Well, when I click on it, now you can't see the mouse, but it's the second button down on the left, the A slash T slash C. I'm going to click it, and you'll see the readout change to the concentration levels, which is 4.00 times 10 to the minus 4 concentration. We're going to go ahead and have the students write that down, and then we're going to click that button again which is going to cycle to the absorbance, and we can see that we have a 0.75 or 75% absorbance. They're going to write that down, and then click the button one more time to cycle to the transmittance, which is 17.78% transmittance. So each time you click this button, we're going to cycle through these data points, and we're going to write those down, which are then later going to be used to plot on a graph. So now we're going to begin part two says when you're finished recording all of your data in part one and have plotted your graph proceed to part two by clicking on the part two button which we are about to do but let's pretend that all these cuvette vials have been read through the spectrophotometer we're gonna skip past that part I'm gonna hit part two now we we'll get a, a new set of samples and we're gonna go ahead and take measurements of these samples just as we did in part one and calculate the average absorbances of these samples so I'm going to open the lid, and I'm going to take a reading of the first sample, as some students would do, right? Um, but what happens now is when I try to do that, click on the absorbance to calibrate, and no, the blank you inserted does not appear to be pure water. Please calibrate the machine first with a cuvette of pure water. So we're going to go ahead and do that, just like we had in part one. We do need to recalibrate the machine. This is a new experiment. So we treat each one of these individually in terms of calibration. So we're going to go ahead and close the lid, recalibrate that. Once we get past that part, we're able to take the blank of H2O out of there. It's now ready. It's been calibrated. And let's put it back and take a reading of all the other samples. We're going to go ahead and take our first measurement. And right now we have 0.359 absorbance cycle again to the transmittance we have 43.75 percent transmittance and concentration as you can see when you try to toggle again is blank and the reason for that is because we're not providing that data in this one um, we asked the students to go ahead and figure out the concentration levels based on the data that was plotted in the graph in part one so we're taking measurements of each of these samples calculating the average absorbance of the samples, and then estimating the concentration of the samples by looking at where the measured absorbance falls on the plotted graph. So this is the idea. We have a hybrid approach here in this lab. We're getting students to take data from the first part based on known samples, plot the graph, and then turn that in as an assignment in the actual physical lab, 
and then take that same assignment to determine the answers in part two, which then are taken as unknown samples that have relationships to the known samples in terms of the plotted graph, and we can get them to approximate the concentration levels from that. One wonderful thing about this lab is that it's very reusable. We do have an XML approach to this in terms of the data presented here, so we can easily update the instructions as well as all of the data in terms of the samples. We could update each sample individually in terms of its transmittance, absorbance, and concentration levels, and even the color that shows up in the vial for the kind of material that's in there. All this updatable by an external file that anybody can edit and change the labs as we need to. It's a very, very reusable lab. So once again, this has been a Beer's Law and Colorimetry Virtual Chemistry Lab demonstration. And my name is Renny Volol, and thank you for watching.